And so we are in a society of everything is quick to get to this, quick results. Everything is instant gratification. But really the thing that we need to start with before any of that is just stretching before we get out of bed every day. And then before we get into bed every day, it's just stretch. So the rules I kind of put for that is when you get to that page, it basically says every time your butt hits the side of the bed, think, I need to stretch. Okay? And that's really the easiest. If you just think about every time you're either getting into bed or getting out of bed, those are going to be two times where you need to stretch. And that's an easy, easy reminder. So one of the things that I always tell everybody is if you have a hard time getting on the ground and getting back up, you have the bed right there to stretch. It's like a giant fluffy yoga mat. All right? So you can do everything right there as you're being lazy, watch the TV, going through the DVR. You can go ahead and pull a knee in, pull the other knee in. But it's something that you need to implement into your daily life. So if you think that before you drink coffee every morning, you're going to go and stretch in the kitchen, or if you think you're going to go start a yoga routine and leave the house every single day and go to a yoga workout, it might not happen. But let's start with just stretching every time we get out of bed, because you're going to get in and out of bed every day. Does that make sense? So start with the simplest things. Kind of find your lowest hanging fruit, pull that down, and say, where can I just implement it already into my day? You have your giant fluffy yoga mat, stretch when you get into bed, and leave it out of bed. Cool? Next one. We ask the exercise question. This is the scary one. So, Exercise is a tough thing because we have our lives, and unfortunately, exercise takes time. Now, where eating healthy makes it a little bit easier because we have to eat already, and it's really just about making a better choice, exercise we actually have to make time or find time for. And that becomes one of the hardest problems is because we kind of put it as it's an all or nothing. We work out for 30 minutes, but if we don't have 30 minutes, we do nothing. Okay? So instead of doing nothing, we have to find a healthy balance between the two. So one of the things we normally recommend to a lot of our clients that are just kind of getting back into the swing of things is something called morning metabolizer workouts. Now, even though it's called a morning metabolizer workout, you can do it any time of day. But the whole idea is they are quick 10, 12, 15 minute workouts depending on your ability level. And it's something that you can do with no equipment. It's something you can do at home. And you're going to focus on your trouble body parts. So like an example of a morning metabolizer workout, um, does everybody have like a coffee pot that they wait for or anything like that or a tea kettle they wait to heat up? I mean, it really could be about that simple three to five minutes, but we went over like bicycle crunches when we were here. So it could be as something as simple as getting on the ground, doing 20 bicycle crunches, standing up, 20 squats, and keep doing those two things until the coffee is done brewing. Or set a 10 minute timer, 12 minute timer, or a 15 minute timer, all right? So it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. You didn't have to lace up shoes. You didn't have to put on anything special to wear. You just wore, you wore to bed. You go in the kitchen, wait for your stuff to get ready, and then you start doing your exercise. So if you're having a hard time finding it after work, or finding the motivation after work, and sometimes before you have a chance to talk yourself out of it, might be the best time, okay? Now, I will tell you, I am not somebody who enjoys working out in the morning. My body just doesn't, I don't like it, I think it's stupid. But, <laughs> our 6 a.m. time is our most popular time. I mean, there could be 30, 40, sometimes almost 50 people at a morning workout, and the whole thing is because for them, it gets it out of the way before they go to work, before their kids are up, before any distractions of the world. So if you have the ambition and it's just finding that time, maybe try and make it the first thing you do as opposed to the last thing you do of the day, and that might be able to put it ahead of time. If you don't have time to put it in, you could do things like what Shelly says, where you're doing squats while you brush your teeth. It could be while you're waiting for somebody or while you're waiting on a phone call, you could be doing high knees, but it could always be things that you're doing and activity is more the name of the game, especially in the beginning of the year, as opposed to how perfect your work is. Okay, so if you're not doing anything, it's a crappy workout. You want to make sure you're at least doing something, and that momentum will build and build and build. Okay, does that make sense? So on this here, there's 15, 12 or 15, I forgot, I just threw everything up there, but morning metabolizer workouts. So examples of what you can do right at home with no equipment in your kitchen or in your bedroom, basically. Okay, so the morning metabolizers are all loaded up, and those are all in there. The next one, supplements. Now, you'll see as the order here, I left nutrition for the end because I figured that's where we're going to have the most questions. So we'll leave that for the very end part. So with supplements, though, what you want to think about is what is the word supplement? There's normally one other word before the word supplement when you see it on the label. A nutritional supplement? Oh, daily, and you said the right daily. one. Oh, that's a oh. Daily. oh. dietary nutrition or dietary supplement, okay? So it's called a dietary supplement because it's supposed to supplement your diet. Okay? But what happens is a lot of people rely on protein shakes and protein bars and supplements as food. And while they can serve as a meal replacement, while they can serve as a good snack, you want to use it as a supplement and something that works around the foundation of your nutrition. So one of the things to me that is the hardest, I guess, to implement something healthy because there's just not a lot of choices is breakfast. So to me, while it is a supplement, to me it's an easy way to also get a guaranteed healthy breakfast first thing in the morning. It's a way that I know it's going to take 30 seconds to a minute to put together. 
um, it's kind of a no-brainer. So a dietary supplement for me, that's a perfect time for me, and that's when I would do a protein shake. Now there's some days that I'm even running behind and 30 seconds is still too much, and what I grab? The protein bar. So it's a little bit quicker and out the door. The one thing Shelly always has on hand too is little muscle milk ready-made drinks, which I think we brought here when we did the other seminar here. But the whole idea with the pre-made ones, I mean, it's the same thing as a protein bar, but you're gonna have less fat and you're gonna have less carbs. So that's like a dietary supplement. It's something to supplement along with your diet, but I'm not going into the day saying, I'm gonna have a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and a healthy dinner like a slim fast. So you wanna use that as like, what is your time that you struggle most? If your time is mid-afternoon, like at three o'clock time, 2.30 time, where everybody hits their crash, maybe that's when you start doing a protein bar. Or maybe that's when you do, can you eat at work? Yeah. Maybe that's when you do a Greek yogurt, or sliced apples, or almonds and apples in a bag together, yeah, exactly. something like that. But it wants to, it, or not want, it needs to be something that's going to fit for your timing. So if you can snack at a 2 30, 3 o'clock time, while a protein shake might be a good meal, eat real food. Okay, it's going to keep you full longer. It's going to be satisfying because you're going to chew, you're going to have crunch, and you're going to have that type of stuff. But you want to use your supplements as that fail safe, whatever you're going to have that downtime or that bad time. So if, say, after dinner is when you make your mistakes, maybe that's a good time to have that protein bar and that protein shake. But my biggest thing is I hate when uh, people are just getting started and I feel like they use it as like a crutch. And they do a protein shake in the morning, a protein shake at lunch, they do a protein bar mid-morning, they do a protein bar mid and it's like they're just eating a bunch of fluff. You know, they're not eating any real food. And my biggest thing is it's not sustainable. So like you guys want to have something that you're going to be able to do today and also be able to do next week and be able to do even in the hardest times of the year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, like what we just went through, okay? So start thinking of those different things as like where have I struggled when things have gotten bad and I've fallen off track, where have I made my biggest mistakes? And maybe that's where you start putting in the Greek yogurt, the protein powder, the protein bars and things like that, okay? So start thinking along those lines, like hey, where is your fail state? Where is your net? Where are you going to catch yourself the next time you fall off? Okay, so the next one besides the protein bars and the protein shakes, the only other supplement that we really recommend that's gonna be on this page as well is branch chain amino acids. Now, we had some of you guys that were drinking them during our exercise that we were doing here, and basically it's like a broken down form of like your protein, it's like the building blocks of it. The biggest thing of what branch chain amino acids do is they actually help for recovery, and they help to reduce your soreness. So, when you are getting into now exercise at the beginning of the year, and maybe you haven't pushed yourself as much the last couple of months, or maybe it's something just starting off again, you're gonna get really sore. And if you guys remember that, that first day, we did squats with the chair back up, and you guys couldn't walk for a week. I mean, that was just sitting and standing back up, all right? So what happens, there's two different ways where people go with that. Some people are like, yes, I'm sore, I feel great. But that's never the newbies. That's always the people that have been in for a while. The newbies are like, Oh no, I'm sorry, I can't move, I'm not going back. So the biggest thing when you're starting off is those branch chain amino acids are gonna to help to hopefully keep you coming back. Because unfortunately, if you get kind of that <clears throat> bummed out mode because you're sore, which is the opposite of what you should go through, but it's one of those things that if you're using your sores as kind of like an anti-motivator, well, those branch chain amino acids are gonna to help to increase your recovery and get you back into that next workout again, okay? So again, supplements are there when you need them. Do you need to be drinking amino acids while we're just sitting here and doing whatever? No. Mm -hmm. But it's for when you're being strenuous and use it as a supplement. So whenever there's an effect, you know, I guess for medications and going to the doctor and stuff like that, it's like we're trying to cover up symptoms. With this, we're trying to just find whatever the underlying problem is, like where do we make the biggest mistakes, where's our nutritional deficiency, and that's where a supplement comes in. So it's not to like mask anything or like a Tylenol. You're actually trying to help the root of the problem and fix it from the inside out type of thing. Okay, so that's your supplements. We're gonna go into two more healthy natural things. So the next one is energy. If you guys are dead and drained at the end of the day like you are right now, do you wanna go work out? Heck no, all right, it's hard. Like guys, we go through the same thing. I saw him Paul the other day, we have a split shift, so we work like 6 a.m. till like noon, and then we have to gear back up again from four until eight. It's some days it's like, you, to try and work out between four and eight after you've had a full morning, it's, it's not doable. So that's one of the things is you really gotta make sure that you are caught up on sleep and I hope for if we have any chemistry people in here, but dihydrogen monoxide, but H2O, so water. So your water and your sleep is gonna make the biggest difference as far as your just natural and day-to-day -day energy, okay? So, is it obviously people gambled in here? Yeah. How many windows do they have in a casino? None, right? They feed you booze all day long, and then through the air vents they're pumping oxygen. Because it keeps you alert, it keeps you awake, it keeps you alive, okay? So it's the same thing. 
We're going to use water as a natural supplement to help boost you, to keep you alive and alert, and maybe run to the bathroom for a few minutes. All right? But it'll get you exercising if you're getting up to go run to the bathroom. All right? So the whole thing is, guys, is like you want to use these natural things to help you. Now, if you're that person that's like always waking up, you know, last minute, struggling, rushing to get to work, and then you're also that same person that's going to sleep super late, I'm guaranteeing it's because of that whole time management organized thing. All right? If you feel like you're never getting caught up at night, and then you're hitting that snooze button, wait until the last minute to leave the house in the morning, like you're doing it to yourself. So not only do you have a lack of sleep, probably a lack of water, probably a lack of food prep, you definitely didn't stretch, you didn't get your supplements or your breakfast in, and so now you're up the creek without paddles. You can't say the right things. <laughs> that's right. Good. That's right. All right. So that's the whole thing, like you're setting yourself up for failure. So we'll talk about the time management thing because I think it is really important, but it's one of those things that you need to be prepared for a lot of these different things. And you saw how just one little thing of hitting the snooze all of a sudden affected every other thing on the actual, you know, five steps here. So it all goes hand in hand. You have to be prepared for the day. You have to prepare for those meals. And that's where we're going to get to the next part of preparing of how we're going to do it, what we're going to eat, and what we're going to make, and all that type of stuff, okay? So remember that each step ties into the next. If you are, like, leaving out stretching, when you go to exercise, guess what? You're not going to be limber and you're going to hurt. If you're not doing your supplements and you're still sore from your exercises, then you're probably not going to stretch either. So it just goes hand in hand. Everything goes from the next step to the next step. So we want to really stress more than anything today, guys, starting with the basics. I haven't said anything yet that you guys can't do. We can all stretch and go side to side, <coughs> leg to leg, whatever we have to do, stretch out our low back, pull a knee into each side of our chest, go in here. I mean, stretching is something we can all do. Exercise, again, even if you're brushing your teeth, hopefully you're all doing that every day, twice a day, <laughs> more, right? Bust out 20 squats while you're doing it. Figure out how long it takes for two minutes and brush your teeth and squat the whole time, but do something you can fit into your lifestyle. The supplements, until you actually find your mistakes or where you're making your mistakes, you don't need to do them yet. They're an added supplement. And as far as the sleep and the water, that's really where it's going to fit into your planning, your nutrition, your time management, kind of all that stuff. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and talk and flip, flip, switch gears, go over to nutrition now. I guess I'm going to pull this one off. Everybody has this website here? Ooh. Food, the fun part. That's why we're all here, right? Uh-oh. Am I going to do this okay, Terry? Can you hold this? Tell a joke. Oh, I can just flip it, right? Yes. Because I've seen people do this before. <laughs> I got it. Beautiful. You hit? Mm. Mm. Always. I have a cough drop. Try it. Open up the sinuses with a cough drop. I apologize. Okay. So, guys, when we get into nutrition, really it has to come down to what is your schedule like? What is your lifestyle like? And then you're going to work your food around that. Okay. So the biggest thing we need to know is where are you going to be busiest throughout the day? Where are you going to have time to eat and where are you not going to have time to eat? All right, so we're going to call that breakfast. We're going to call it S1 for snack one. We'll call it lunch. S2, and we'll go dinner. All right, we're just going to assume whatever we do Monday, I'm going to try and keep it simple and we'll do Monday through Friday. And I'll show you how we'll make all um, like modifications to the plan throughout the week. Okay, so what we want to look at, I think most of you guys here are going to have a very similar schedule, I hope, at least for starting of work as far as ending of work. So we're going to use a basic, we start at 9? 8.30. Okay, so we'll start 8.30 going till 5 o'clock then. Now, what is the typical time most people wake up? 5.30, 6 o'clock? 6.30. Anybody later than 6.30? Oh, yeah. You can admit it. 7 to 8. Yeah, I look pretty close. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Oh, I think you said 10. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm not the only one getting fired today. <laughs> I don't like it. All right. So I guess with breakfast, let's play on this. If we're at 5.30 to say 6.30, 7 o'clock, most everybody should have time at least to prepare a little something each day. Yeah, no? Is that yes. an assumption? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm asking you. I'm here for you guys. Yeah. We'll say yes. So why don't we do this today? We're gonna to do in a hurry, and then we'll do something we actually have time to eat. So we'll make two choices for every snack, we'll do every two choices for every lunch, and uh, second snack for the afternoon, and for dinner. So we'll get multiple options going here. All right, so let's go with a snack on the run. What's something that we can do quick, grab and go? Hard boiled egg. Hard boiled egg? Cheese stick. Denise, now's your time to talk. Peanuts. <laughs> I do a protein shake. All right, I like that. Hard boiled egg, shake, <clears throat> you just said something else that was good? Um, I said cheese stick. peanuts, cheese sticks. I'm going to move that down to a snack, but I'm going to use, you said peanut and cheese stick? Uh -huh. Or apple and cheese stick, something like that. 
Anything else for breakfast up there, guys? Uh, hard boiled egg shake. What about actual, like, when you go to breakfast, what do you guys eat? If you had time to sit down and make it, what would you make? Egg whites. Egg whites. That's nice. Like rubber. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you enjoy egg whites? Hey, you can. There's nothing. I mean, it's the healthier way, I guess. But I like egg whites. I like egg whites. Yeah, if you like them. I'm sorry. Don't, don't let my influence. Uh, I shamed your egg white meat. I'm very sorry. Tomatoes, oh. onions, I love that. So like all oh, tomatoes, onions, mushrooms. Egg whites. I just put omelet, but yes. You had egg substitute on yours. Uh, you can do it. I didn't say there's anything wrong. It's for convenience. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm going to eat some real egg. All right, so as far as this, this gives you some different options here. Now, if we're going to have something... I guess, and that was more I thought on the go, but that does seem like that's kind of a mix of everything. What are some other different things? Like, is anybody like oatmeal on here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So again, we talked about the rule previously, and kind of just to refresh, carbohydrates, whenever you eat it, blood sugar will spike, and then about an hour and a half later, it'll crash. So if you had that, say, around like 7 o'clock, that would be 8, 39 o'clock, that you would start to kind of hit that downtime. If you add just a little bit of protein or a little bit of fats to it, that's going to help keep it sustained for a little bit longer. So that's where like your oatmeal could go ahead and have maybe some walnuts, something along those lines of like more nuts and more fatty or something along that's that. Raisins. What's that? Walnuts and raisins and Yeah, walnuts and raisins. Now the one thing to keep in mind with raisins, that's gonna be another carb. Sugar. And it's not gonna be a very quick acting carb, correct. Yeah. So you're gonna have an oatmeal which will be a slow digesting carb, you have the quick acting carb of raisins, but that's gonna create a pretty quick spike and a pretty pretty quick crash. Now you can have a smaller portion of that mix it in with the hard boiled eggs like you mentioned, or have the egg whites like you mentioned, but having just a little bit of protein will help to offset that. Now we have a lot of clients too that might say eat their oatmeal at home and then on their drive to work they're sipping on a protein shake or a smoothie maybe with a little bit of blended fruit. So it does give you some options and it doesn't all have to be in one sitting guys. Like again, you can kind of graze and spread your meals out and that's also gonna help hold off your hunger a little bit more, okay? So your breakfast might be a little bit of oatmeal, snack on some sliced apples as you're driving to work, and you kind of spread that out just a little bit longer to help hold you over a little longer as well. Okay, so over here with the breakfast, I would just go ahead and throw the typical of like Greek yogurt, oats and eggs. Nothing. Now, Shelly does Canadian bacon with either, well, I guess any of that stuff, eggs yeah. or whatever else. Okay. All right, so let's go to snacks then. With snacks, peanuts, cheese stick, that sounds pretty simple, common. Anything else that you guys typically do? Almonds. What's that? Almonds. Almonds, yeah, same thing. So let's go ahead and just throw any type of nuts in here with this. Okay, what else, guys? What do you guys do over there for snacks? Anything was at your desk today? Beef jerky. Beef jerky, I love that one. Now, a lot of people, the biggest thing they'll say about beef jerky is? Sodium. Sodium, okay? Sodium. So, now if you're eating beef jerky, sitting at your desk, not drinking water all day, and then you're going home and sitting on the couch, probably not the best snack, okay? You got some bloated fingers and toes. But, if you're being active, again, your kidneys are designed to take in sodium, kidneys are designed to flush out all this good stuff, but you gotta actually give your kidneys what it needs to work properly. So as long as you're staying hydrated, like we talked about on the other side, and as long as you're continuing to drink fluids through the day, beef jerky is going to be that big of an issue. Now, if you're doing beef jerky and packaged food, and then you're eating the frozen pre-grilled uh, chicken fajita vegetables and whatever, and ramen, yeah, like yeah, you're going to blow out. Like you're going to you're going to be a swollen mess and probably sweating and all sorts of stuff. So you really want to make sure if you're going to eat like beef jerky that you're staying hydrated. And staying yeah, and Shelly made a good point too. Staying away from some of the different flavors of beef jerky. Um, you know, reading labels, and that's one of the things that I have as a note on the other side, but just being being label aware. You know, it's not calories. Calories don't matter to you. What matters is the fat that makes up the calories, the ca uh, carbs that make up the calories, and the protein. So you want to look at those labels. And now you'll see a lot of beef jerky products that'll have, say, like 12, 13 grams of protein and three carbs. Now the fat on all beef jerky is gonna basically be like zero, one, maybe two tops. So there's basically no fat in beef jerky and it's all protein. But then you'll find others like teriyaki, like what Shelly was mentioning, that'll have less protein, say 10 or 11 protein, because it has more sugar. And it'll have sometimes 10, 12, 15 grams of sugar for even less protein. So basically because they're using a sugary marinade and it tastes delicious, but you're not really getting the benefit. You might as well eat something else you might like a little bit more, okay? So sometimes even when we think we're making a healthy choice and that's what you know, talking about looking at the light menu at a restaurant, sometimes it's not always the best choice because they're going by calories for light, which if you looked at the label of those two beef jerkies, the calories are exactly the same, 
but from one of them you got more protein, the other one you get more carbs. Okay, so don't always be confused by calories. More, more sugar, yeah. Okay, so peanuts, cheesesteaks, nuts, beef jerky. We already talked about protein bars. What would be something else we could do for a snack? Yeah. Fruit, like Apples I like. Fruit, any type peanut of fruit. Butter. Peanut butter. How about we do peanut butter with the apple? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Or celery. Or celery. I like that. Now, what's something else that we could do with celery? Or celery, Miss Shelley? Ooh. Oh. Cream cheese. Yes. So, if you guys have been to the, the Publix, buffalo chicken dip. Yes. <laughs> that Shelley has me hooked on as my go-to quick whatever I want to eat. I'm starving. I was writing it right there. So the buffalo dip, you can also do hummus with the same celery and carrot sticks and cucumber slices or whatever. So there's a lot of different things that you can do that maybe it'll have that same snacking type feel as chips, but they're not gonna taste like potato chips, guys, get over it, all right? They're gonna taste like what healthy tastes like. So you have to just find what's gonna work for you. Now for me, if I didn't like hummus, which I actually do, I wouldn't eat it, okay? Because, what's that? Oh, love hummus, yeah. And it's like, so if you don't like hummus, don't eat hummus, if you don't like yogurt, don't eat yogurt. Like, if you don't like water, don't drink the water. I don't know. But, like, you gotta find, like, what works for you. And, like, the more you force yourself to do these different things that you don't like, the quicker you're gonna fall off on that. Okay? So, these are all great snack things here. I think those are awesome choices. As far as lunch, let's go over lunch. What do we got? Usually a sandwich. I was waiting for to say salad. 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 Sandwich. Okay, so let's go one by one. So, we'll go sandwich first. What's on that sandwich? Let's talk to me. Uh, turkey, lettuce, tomato. All right, I like that. Turkey, lettuce, tomato. All right, now the key thing with the sandwich is you're going to have what? The bread is going to be what? Protein, carb, or fat? Carb. Carb. The turkey is going to be? Protein. Protein. The tomatoes will be carb, and I'm not really worried about that so much. Okay? Lettuce, free food. So we're out food. So when you're looking at a sandwich, the biggest thing with that is do you have enough protein and do you have too many carbs, okay? Now, if you look at like a Subway bun and a roll, it's huge, a lot of bread, and very, very little meat. Okay, if you go to, say, like a Jersey Mike's, so you have a little bit more meat. But you are also in control of that, too. You can also get the foot-long sub and take all the meat and put it on one half. They'll do it for you. They'll even give you the bread. If you don't feel like wasting anything, you give it to a bird. But it's still something <laughs> to where you can stack up your sandwich and still make a sandwich extremely healthy, just like what you said there. But a lot of times, again, we go back to what we ate when we were in first grade and second grade. We got one slice of lunch meat, one slice of cheese, a gob of mayo, a gob of mustard, and two thick slices of bread. So that's not conducive to your goals. That's not moving you that direction. But you take the same exact meal and you just switch it up and make small little changes with it. And now it's a better option. Okay? Now, a lot of people like to put condiments on their sandwiches. It's another spot where you make a lot of mistakes. If you're somebody that loves ranch or loves mayo, there's more natural versions of mayo with olive oil, but then also in place of ranch, Shelly's posted the recipe, just use the Hidden Valley Ranch packets, put it in with Greek yogurt, and that now becomes your ranch spread that you can put on salads, you can put on sandwiches, you can put on your chicken and bacon, so there's a lot of things you can do, but it's just making, again, the small changes. Still tastes awesome, still tastes, you know, the same way you've been used to having it, but it's just a small little change in ingredient. I feel like there should be an H there. Is that spelled right? <laughs> Who's my spelling people? Sandwich. H I C H, yeah. No, 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 no. That is right. I just keep looking back at it. It's driving me nuts. Okay. Salad was the next one. Let's go. What's in your salad? Cottage cheese. In the salad? I love it. Okay, so she said cottage cheese. It'll be something worth trying. What else is in the salad? Chicken. Tuna fish. My slanted. Okay, so so far, the things that have been mentioned have all been good things. They're all protein. So, cottage cheese, uh, grilled chicken, tuna, eggs. So, if anything like that, you're taking just basically like your vegetables, which are a free food, and you're just adding more dense and hearty protein into it. One, because you need it for your metabolism, but two, so you're not hungry again in a half an hour. So, some other things for salads. The biggest thing for me chickpeas. Chickpeas, yeah, anything like that. Let me go ahead and add some of the other stuff here. So, you can do beans, peas, corn. What did you say? Avocado, sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds, <laughs> pumpkin seeds. <laughs> all right, sunflower, all those different things. Now, the biggest thing, I am not always an advocate for lunch or salads at lunch because you have so much time left in your day. All right, so you're talking about time management and we're talking about snacking and, and kind of overeating at certain times. One of the biggest things I find is the people that eat salads at lunchtime are the ones that make all the mistakes down here. Okay? It's not enough food. So you need to make sure that's energy dense enough that there's more than just salad to it. 
So that is where you want to throw in you know, some sort of nuts, blue cheese, beans, corn, avocado, like make it into a meal. But if it's just, again, bird food, little chicken, or bird food, little bit eggs, like, yeah, it's gonna be good. You better have a solid snack plan for that two, two thirty time, or you're really gonna hit that kind of uh, crash. And then by the time you get to dinner, you're tasting, sampling, licking, tasting everything that's uh, in the way <laughs> before you make dinner. Okay, so then you might make another healthy salad for dinner, but you've already eaten like a thousand calories of junk in between that. Snack. You know, so it's really it's true. You've done it. <laughs> that's why you're laughing. Uh, but it is. So it's a situation like salads. Okay, but just make sure you have something with it. Now, even if it's something just like a soup and a salad, but there's like, uh, I don't know, something from Panera, I don't even know what they have, but throw something with it. Like, you gotta have something additional. Um, somebody asked today, as far as fast food, like Wendy's, to me, like, well, Shelly does it better than I do, but she'll do like the side salad, she'll do a chili and then nuggets. You're getting your protein, you're getting your fiber, it's dense, and you're also getting salad to help digest everything. Well, like, kind of start thinking along those lines. Like, a salad's not enough, but when you throw that chili in with it, and then on top of that, maybe even some nuggets, like, that's a full meal, and now for three bucks, you stay full from Wendy's, and for five bucks, no, eight bucks, you got a baconator, you know? So it's like eating healthy doesn't always have to be expensive, but you gotta start making just, again, if there's multiple things on a menu, make the better choice of the two, eat the better donut, and you start you know, making the difference, okay? So lunch, let's go one more lunch, something a little bit heavier, what we do? Do we all eat at work, first of all? We do go out, so everybody, okay, cool. Well, we have Capital Taco here, I'm sure you guys have something there. So what can you do, I, because again, you can get thrown off by all the different you know, sauces and condiments and stuff like that. But if you have rice and beans, you can have your grilled chicken taco, you can probably have whatever condiments at that point as long as it's not too crazy. But you now made a good meal with a little bit of heartiness, a little bit of carbs, and you really put together a great meal. Yeah, it's gonna keep you full, that's the best part. Yeah, Shelly just said there. She should be here, right? But she has rice and beans to give you overeating. Oh, well, here's the thing too, but what's to stop that also from being half of your lunch tomorrow? You know, and I think that's the other part too, and that's where we get into the dinner part, that I think we should just have Shelly come up and talk, but um, how to make your dinner the best. But really, more than anything, the, the biggest key for dinner, if anybody watched our Facebook Live last week, that went really awful. Um, <laughs> so, so dinner, just cook double of whatever you're cooking tonight, and that becomes your lunch the next day. So basically, each day for dinner, you cook a little more, and then the second half becomes your lunch. And eat a little more, second half becomes your lunch. The really cool thing with this, and I know we're skipping over this snack, but the really cool thing with that is, say your husband is somebody who likes steak and potatoes. Like, that's the biggest thing I always hear is my husband likes carbs. Well, good, we all do. I heard you guys saying you like bread and carbs. Like, duh, <laughs> we all do. So it's, um, you know, they, they make them like that so they taste good, you know? So you don't wake up in the middle of the night like, grilled chicken. Like, no, you want like, peanut butter stuff. Like, it's, uh, so your, your body's smart. It knows that it wants good food. But the one thing here, so say your husband does want steak and potato. Well, what's stopping you from maybe doing like a quarter potato, half potato, with maybe a little more vegetables today and for dinner, but then you take that three quarters of potato and then when you have a chance to digest it the next day, you're gonna now have it at lunchtime. So now you have more energy throughout the day when you actually needed it. You don't need energy at night, you're winding down anyway. But it's one of those things where you can still eat the same foods, but take your bigger car portion, save that for lunch, eat your smaller car portion for dinner, and fluff up your dinner with extra vegetables, with beans, with uh, some of the stuff you need, I mean, you've been awesome, you should be right here, but like the cottage cheese, the avocado, kind of all those different things along that, but it's find more substance and density to add to your dinner and not as many carbs, okay? One of the best ways and quickest ways that you can make a change, eating a healthy breakfast and making your dinner not have so many carbs but still having your protein, okay? So again, jumping ahead a little bit, the dinner tip right there, and that can even be a dinner tip that takes you to Tuesday and Wednesday, but cook a little more at dinner so it becomes your lunches the next two days or next day. Well, I wanted to skip back to lunch. A lot of places will offer like extra meat on yes. salads. Yes, hold on, one Just second. I forgot what your voice sounds like. <laughs> no, I just wanted to skip back to lunch and say, um, if you pay attention or actually lunch or dinner, if you go out, a lot of places offer extra meat. Like I go to Chipotle, I always get extra chicken. Therefore, it gives me, basically, I can make almost three meals out of a Chipotle bowl. Um, same thing, anytime salads, there's a Thai place. I get chicken fried rice, no joke, but I get extra chicken. So it's more, I'm getting more protein than the rice. Um, so those are just little things to look out for. Honestly, anytime you can get extra protein, it is worth the extra dollar fifty upcharge because generally you can make an extra meal out of that, or at least you're knowing you're eating more protein than the bad stuff. So keep talking. I'm ready. Yeah. 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 Y
Truly, I mean. It's do you guys want to see her? No, no, no. Yes, yes. No, no. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe later. No, she's so right. I mean, that's really it. Like, we went to, like, around here, a place called Orchid's Time. I don't know if you guys have been to that on Regency. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's, Pad Thai probably is the worst choice. That's sometimes what I'll get. But the chicken fried rice, I mean, you're getting vegetables. You're getting rice that was made right there. It's not processed. There's no extra, you know, chemicals or anything else in it. And you get extra chicken. And, I mean... I don't know what it is saying extra chicken, like the original meal doesn't have very much, and then they put like four times the amount when you ask for extra chicken. And it's a buck fifty, I think. Right. It's not much. Same thing, Chipotle, I think the steak is a dollar twenty five for double meat, it's one seventy five for chicken and one of them, whatever the uh, the carne yeah. something is like maybe two bucks. But you're talking the meal was already six or seven bucks, so to add two bucks and now turn it into two meals, you now actually or three. Yeah, like Lawrence just said, you're now putting your meal down to maybe two seventy five. Four dollars maybe for a meal, which you're not going to get anything healthy like that any other place, and really you're not going to get anything unhealthy that's going to keep you full through the night for four bucks either. So it's really starting to look at it where again we think it, you know healthy food is expensive, but not really. When you start to break it down, you make multiple meals out of it, and you actually plan a little bit in advance. So again, talking about some of like the snacks here, going for like the after work, kind of that mid afternoon. So it might be while you're at your desk, kind of finishing up your day, or as you're driving home. The key thing with this is what you're going to do for that next couple hours when you're leaving work, okay? And this is where a lot of people make their biggest mistake, is they ate good all day, or they ate nothing all day. Then they get to right here, and they're like, well, I'm going to have a healthy snack. But their healthy snack turns into being a whole bag of almonds, or it turns into being a whole whatever, a whole bag of grapes, or a whole bag of good stuff. But sometimes when you have the good thing, they eat a whole lot of it, it's still 300 carbs. Okay, so like you can't just sit there and eat fruit for two hours when you get home from work. It's not going to work. So you have to find that's the work twice in the sense. So you're going to have here, you need to have something that's in moderation and something that's planned in advance. And again, the biggest problem where people make a mistake here is not eating enough here. So if you're one of those salad people and you find yourself overeating when you get to that snack at dinner time, either boost up your salad or add something else to it, or better yet, take your salad, move that to dinner, take your husband's dinner and make that your lunch the next day. Okay, so that's a really, really simple way to still be a part and involved with the family meal planning. Still eat what they're eating, but you just cut your carbs down and still eat the protein. Okay? Anybody want to go over snacks here? We think we have that covered based on up here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. And again, like there's so many other things you can make. The peanut butter ball recipe, we posted some other things on the support page, so we can make sure that we refresh that on there. So for dinners now, what are dinner ideas? Because that's where we all make mistakes. Let's give it. Who's got a healthy thing? Steak and potatoes, yes. Do we like steak? Do we like potatoes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's do steak and potatoes. We're going to make a, say, like quarter to third of a potato. So we're going to go steak and potato. All right, mine I like is like chicken, a fajita vegetables. So again, that could be from Chipotle. And the other thing, too, is like they put your rice on the bottom so you can even pull some of the meat over, have a bigger meat portion, save some more of your carbs for the next day at lunchtime. Um, what else for dinner? Salads. Those are big chicken breast. Big chicken breast. So with the chicken breast, we put out a lot of recipes though. You can do like the Greek yogurt one. You can do the one with the Parmesan chicken. I think we posted uh, the one with Kirsten, but you can do the same thing taking hummus. You basically just coat the, uh, the chicken and hummus and bake it. Same way you would normally bake your chicken. And it'll come out with flavor in it. It soaks in. It kind of gives it like an outer crust. Um, so there's lots of things you can do. The biggest thing is, what are we going to eat alongside of this protein? Because you guys aren't going to go home and just eat protein. Let's be honest. Cauliflower mash. Cauliflower mash. Can you make it? I buy it already made. No, but that's good. That's why I was asking. Do you have a brand that you like? Because we, we still have not mastered it. I mean, we've tried. It's just, it's, it's, I, like, I make it soup. Yeah, she's, she's making hard. cauliflower soup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bird's eye has one. Bird's eye? Bird's eye. Bird's eye. Bird's eye. <laughs> Oh, Alright, so bird's eye. We're going to write actual brand names so we can see and that. Green Giant has cauliflower rice. Ooh, yes, they have cauliflower steam rice. Steam bag. Steam bag. Yeah. Bird's eye has one too. And I do that in place of regular rice and with a bunch of vegetables yeah. and chickpeas. Doo -doo. Uh, rice and potatoes. Bird's eye also has... Um... I'm not ready for you yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> cauliflower tater tots. Oh, cauliflower tater tots. Where have we found I saw those. Yeah? Yeah. Are they good? Yeah. Sweet potato tater tots. All right. So here's the thing with some of these healthy things. 
Now you're gonna look at like whatever say is on like cauliflower. You flip over and look at an actual label and there's nothing in it. I mean it's a little bit of fiber, a little bit of carbs, there's no fat, there's no protein, there's nothing additional. Then you look at your cauliflower tossing and you say, there's five grams of fat, there's ten carbs, there's whatever. But you know what your potato and your french fries and the other stuff that you were previously eating had? Like a hundred times that, you know? So it's something where don't get thrown off. Like yes, there's still gonna be calories in good food. Like calories don't disappear just because it's healthy. So it's something where you are still gonna see that there's calories and stuff. There's still gonna be fat in those tater tots or whatever it is. But like just know that you're making a better choice. You're eating the better donut. You know, again, it started, Trish, you said yes, you but it too. started the same thing, like with looking at my fitness pal every single day when she went to Dunkin' Donuts in the morning and choosing the better donut that was available, and that turned into another healthy choice, another healthy choice, and you've lost how much now? A little under 100 pounds. Like, oh, right around 100 pounds. Wow. So, yeah. you know, it's like, and, and by making a better choice of a donut, <laughs> like how many of you guys say, oh, I can't diet, or I messed up this morning, I'm done. <laughs> like, it, there's so many no. chances to make a good choice throughout the day that'll make a difference, but we all have this like all or nothing attitude because of this instant gratification, but really make a better choice now. The next choice, hopefully you'll make a better choice, but if you mess up, like you still got more choices in the day to catch up on those things, okay? So we have ideas here. I think the cauliflower products are a great idea, but be creative, be willing to try new things. You might find something that you really, really like that might be something better for your needs and family and everything else along with that, okay? Uh, as far as desserts, I think we post a lot of desserts. I can post something back up on the support page again. Um, we've kind of covered that in detail. I'd love to do a quick time management because it's my favorite subject in the world. Um, but if we can cover that, is there anything else we want to make sure we cover? Because I believe I've gone through as we've done this. Food control at work, we've gone over that. You're just eating salads at lunch most likely. Um, meal planning, hopefully we've gone over that a little bit, but I can touch on that just a little bit more. What to eat, hopefully we've covered that. Fast food, we're gonna send that out to you guys. So as far as with meal planning, guys, so here's kind of the idea. You need to have a layout and a template. Um, we posted it before on that support page, but we can do it again, which is open boxes. So you wanna have five boxes going down and seven days across so you have your meals laid out. To us, we never plan on Saturday and Sunday because, yeah, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> so you, know, you wanna be realistic with yourself. And that's the other thing too, don't buy seven days of vegetables when you know you're not eating vegetables on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, okay? So like, be very realistic. So let's plan at least Monday through Thursday if we wanna plan Monday through Thursday and a half, or I'm sorry, Monday through Friday and a half. So you're basically going to like midday at, at lunch on Friday. And that way dinner you can have with the family or go out and you can kinda of have a little bit more freedom. But the whole idea is like, write this out and start looking at what your meals are for the week. Where are you going to have something coming up? Do you have a lunch meeting? Do you have something at work that's going to take you away? Um, is there going to be a day where you're not going to have a chance to prep and you got to leave the house earlier? So before you, any, you put any meals into it, look at where your calendar is going to need to be adjusted. So if on Wednesday, for instance, so let's just go ahead and drop this down. It's government paper we can waste. Can I fire again? <laughs> no, we can't do that. Right. Yes. I, you have no idea. I, I like will reuse cups. I am I'm such a I, I don't yeah. I don't waste, I don't throw away yeah, I'm 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 like that. Alright, so we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we'll go Friday and cut it off halfway. Alright, so when you're looking at it, now I know there's some people that want to eat something different every single day, and I totally understand variety. When you're first starting off, that's gonna be a failing point because if you think you're gonna come up with seven days worth of different things, if you think you're gonna come up with five different different meals throughout the day, like that's a lot, guys. Like that's a lot of things to come up with, to come up with 35 different meals. So what you might wanna do is, when you start looking at this, like breakfast here on this day, if you're doing, I guess we should go back to some of our things, but yeah. So if you're doing a hard-boiled egg here, you might wanna look and say like for snack two, <laughs> But snack two on Tuesday might be hard-boiled egg here. And then you might go up here on Wednesday and it's going to be your snack one hard-boiled egg. And for Thursday it might be back to your breakfast and it might be your snack one again on Friday. So you're only making it the one time or if you do make hard-boiled eggs twice a week or whatever, but you're now taking it, you're moving it all over so it's not like I had this for my snack yesterday. But it is, but you had it a different time. You know, or it was your breakfast yesterday and you had two of them along with your oatmeal. You know, but that way it's still there's not that many foods in the world you can have something different for 35 different meals in a week, so things are gonna to have to repeat. Maybe it's just what you have along with it that'll make the difference. So here in the afternoon when you have your dead spot, you might wanna put with an apple, so you have a little bit of energy with the protein. If you're here for a Wednesday morning, uh, Friday morning, and it's something where 
You're no at your desk, you're a little more sedentary for the rest of the morning. You might put in here where it might just be a handful of almonds on this day. And it might be like, say, a rice cake with peanut butter on this day. All right, so you're gonna have maybe the same meals or the same base of a meal, but you're gonna spread it out all throughout the week to make it a little bit different. Same thing, you might do here, Greek yogurt. It might be breakfast here on this day. It might be your dessert down here. But all you're gonna do is you're gonna start filling in these pieces, okay? When you get to your different meals, same thing, you're gonna get to lunch, how many ounces are we gonna do? Are we gonna do three ounces or however, but for ladies, I would typically say three ounces would be good just to purchase based on, and for guys, maybe up it to like six to eight ounces of what you're buying. But if you start looking, you're gonna need protein for this meal, protein for this meal, and we're good there. So we're gonna need four protein meals here. We're gonna need four protein meals here. So you already know you have eight meals that you need to buy in advance for that has protein in them. So if you're looking here at these eight meals, and I don't wanna lose people with math, all right? But if Shelly is doing three ounces per meal, I'm doing five ounces per meal, that means we need eight ounces per meal that we're eating. If there's eight meals that we need to buy for for the week, that means we need to buy 64 ounces in our grocery shopping cart, okay? But if you're like, well, I'm gonna buy a pound of chicken, I'm gonna buy a pound of beef, I'm gonna buy a pound of fish, you get home, you have three pounds, but what do you really need? You need, what is that, 16, 16, chicken? You need four pounds? No, that's four pounds. Don't lie to me. 16, 10 and a half is 32, 16 again, four pounds, yeah. I know, I'm, I'm figuring it out myself, I'm learning as I go. All right, so, but 64 ounces. So you need four pounds of meat, so if you only bought three, what's gonna happen when you get to Wednesday night or Thursday morning? Or you're gonna say, oh, well he ate my food, or he did this, or I didn't have it, so I went to McDonald's instead. There's always <laughs> all these excuses of somebody ate your food, but most of the time it's just not buy enough, okay? So if you buy this in advance, if you know that you need 64 ounces for the week, well then buy right here on this midline, between Tuesday and Wednesday, so basically Wednesday for dinner, you need to make sure you put the 32 ounces for these days, and you need to have 32 ounces for these days cooked over here on Sunday, okay? But it starts to give you at least a game plan and a battle plan. What are we gonna eat with that chicken? I have no idea, but I can tell you what, if it's cooked, we're gonna have a lot better chance of putting it with something healthy, than if it's not cooked, then we gotta prepare it. Because what are we doing with it here? Jellies. <laughs> but we already said, we're, we're on a month no desserts, so we're, we're not going to have an appetizer, we're not going to have a dessert, we're doing a month no pizza. So I did 21 days leading up to the new year, the protein shake for breakfast every morning, did it every day except for Christmas Eve, I don't even know what happened, I blew it. Um, then the next thing is now I do 20 ounces of water and fiber with my protein shake in the morning before I can have a meal, so that's now phase two. And then right on new year, actually it's January 2nd, no pizza, no desserts for a month. So, like guys, we're trying to now, did I say what I'm eating for lunch every day? Did I say what I'm eating for dinner every day? No, no. like I reheated French bread pizza yesterday for lunch. Like, I am not worried about all the other meals. I'm not gonna make everything perfect on day one. So for leading up to January 1st, the whole thing was making sure I was getting my protein back in. I fall off just like everybody else does. For January now, it's cleaning up some of the bad meals. And then in February, hopefully it's not only just cleaning them up, but it's making better choices on those meals in between, okay? so. If you think that you can nail this perfectly on day one, power to you, but we can, and our clients can. So it's all about how can you phase it in naturally into your life with the least, least half of resistance, okay? And that's really what it comes out to. You gotta write it down. You're not gonna be better than somebody who's lost 100 pounds. You're not gonna be better than somebody who's lost 20. You gotta just start off like you're a beginner. When you started this job, you probably really sucked at it, okay? But you learned, and you made mistakes, and every time you made a mistake, what happened? You got better because somebody had to tell you what you did wrong. Well, these, if you're not ever making a mistake, you're never gonna learn. You're just waiting for that perfect meal plan, that perfect meal plan, but unless it's foods that you like, it's never gonna be perfect, because I can give you a meal plan all day long. You might eat it for a week, you might eat it for two, but as soon as you either don't go grocery shopping, or if you're tired of eating those foods, you're gonna go back to the foods that you've always liked, loved, and devoured, okay? So you might as well make small changes, still keep eating the foods you like, love, and devour, but eat smaller portion sizes, along with some better options throughout the day. Does that make sense? Now do we have time for time? If you're doing seafood, if you're doing seafood, could that be six ounces instead of three or so, so guys, there's no limit on your protein. So you guys need as much as you want. The only time I would really say that there would be a limit on protein is when you're having like ribeye or like really fatty hamburger, but as long as you're buying better quality meat, I wouldn't worry about it. So yeah, you can have as much as you want. Because here's the thing. Say you have six ounces of protein, say you have eight ounces of protein for dinner, that's also gonna stop you from eating after dinner and eating something that might have sugar or worse fats or something else. 
you're at least getting protein and healthy animal fats, whereas it would be processed fats and corn syrup. Okay? So you're still getting a better choice. So I would not limit your meats, especially at dinner time. It's going to keep you full. Meat and vegetables, along with something, should be your meal. If you try and just eat vegetables and meat, you're going to fail. It's not going to work. We're human. Carbs taste too good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I posted today my actual exact to-do list. I sent it out to I think 40 something people already today, but it's on my Facebook page today. So if you want to see how I actually lay out my day, and I'm always interested in how other people that are super busy lay out their day too, but this is what's worked for me. I actually have like titles here. So this would be like my upcoming blog topics. This would be like Shelly's list here. And I have all my employees listed out on this side. For me on this side though, I have my top five. And then I have everything to do right below it. So this has like 20 something lines. This one here only has five things. Now I'm a guy, I can only do two things at once, but I at least <laughs> like to look a little bit into the future. Okay, so I'm never gonna get this done in 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours, or anything else, okay? So how you could use this if you guys just wanted to use a legal pad is like this side became your to-do list, this side became your top five. And actually, I think I taught this 11 years ago, there's a YouTube video on this, but basically you're gonna write down everything here. So if it's like walk dog, or let's go wash dogs. Let's go um, clean kitchen. What else do we have, guys? What's daily tasks, what stuff we have? You guys are doing nothing when you go home, right? Uh, yeah. Dishes. <laughs> Laundry. Clean what about food prep? Cooking. Food prep. I was going to say. Um, cooking. <laughs> grocery shopping. Laundry. 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 What about cooking? Yeah. Because look, guys, we're talking about meals on the other side. Not only we have to cook it and put it into the actual oh, container. And, clean up after it. and then you have to clean up after it. So your meals include four steps basically. And not only that, but then we still have dishes on here too. So like your food is the most intensive step, and yet we don't ever plan on what we're gonna cook. We just fit it in. You know? So when you start looking at this, now unfortunately all this had to do with food prep. But the whole idea is there might be something like monumental on here like pay the bills. What's that? Pay the, pay the bills. bills. I like this electric bill. Right? So how many of you have made a giant to-do list like this? And all of a sudden, really, the most important one was not getting your lights turned off, and the electric bill was at the very bottom. Because if your lights get turned off, you're not doing your dishes, you're not cleaning your kitchen, you're not doing your food prep. So it's like all these different things. So once you have your giant to-do list, which again, if you're going to use a legal pad, use your whole left side, the right side would be your top five. Well, to me, electric would go right here. Then what do we have to do next? Kind of got to make our list, really, more than anything, because that's not even on here. So like your grocery list. Then you have to actually grocery shop. Then you actually have to uh, cook. Then you have to prep in containers. Okay. So now this is just all food based. But my actual to-do list has categories, everything on the whole side from where my personal stuff is, who I need to call and meet with, who I haven't seen in a while that I need to reach back out to, what are upcoming blog topics, Shelly, oh no, upcoming events, Shelly's task list, our manager D's task list, one staff member, another staff member, and that's how it's laid out. So I have individual departments all on one half of a page, and my side is all on this side. So that way, when I have something that comes up on this list, I'm like, wash dogs, this doesn't really happen, but I'm like, Shelly can handle that, and we put wash dogs. More than anything, it's like this. Laundry, cooking, dishes, cooking. <laughs> and we just make one giant head of the air. <laughs> so, but that's how you become an actual boss at your job, okay? And this is not, this is, I, I don't do everything at my job. Paula doesn't do everything here. She has all of you guys. Each one of you is responsible for a department at which you are the best at, or hopefully the best in the area at. So the whole idea is you start putting people in positions to do things. How many of you guys take out your own like kitchen trash at your house? Do you have kids? Do you have a husband? husband. They should we be doing We both it. do it. Yeah, okay, they both do it. It's on an alternating schedule, but all fine. When we have something that we both do, she does it. When there's something that I have to do, I do it. You know, so don't have things that you both do at home, guys. So like when you go and you buy a car at a dealership, did you buy it based on the marketing that the guy washing the cars is doing? No. The guy who did the marketing only does the marketing. When you show up on the lot, only the salesperson's gonna talk to you, not Billy, you know, whatever, who's over in service. So you're going to have one person, the next person, the next person. When you get to finance, you're not talking to your sales guy anymore. When you go to your final paperwork, you're going to actually sit with the sales manager because they're not going to mess it up because they're the most important step. These other guys can get them all the way here, but one person's going to take control at the end. 
So with your household, it's the same type thing. You might have a bunch of things on here that are your jobs at the house, but when you start to get to this and you're like, oh my gosh, if I don't get to this, I'm never gonna get to this and this, what can I start delegating to make my afternoon a little bit lighter? Then you start to focus on just your top five, okay? So it's really more than anything, you're not gonna get more than maybe one thing to, uh, done a day, two things done a day, three things done a day, but at least if say you only got one thing done today, your power didn't turn off tomorrow. At least if you got two things done today, then you can at least go grocery shopping after work tomorrow because you at least got your list today. But so many people, again, it's all or nothing. It's list, grocery shopping, cook, put everything. But you gotta start breaking stuff down into steps. And these all steps are manageable, but all this together, that's like a two, three, four hour job right here. This might take you five, 10 minutes tops. That might take you an hour. The cooking might take you a half hour, an hour. But if you break these things down, it's doable. But when you try and look at this one giant step, not gonna happen, okay? This McDonald's is way quicker. <laughs> and it's tasting. And it, it is, but you know, somebody else said that on one of my posts today too. But it's better tasting until you haven't had it in a while. Like if you take away McDonald's for a long time, or you have somebody who hasn't had fast food in a couple of years, and you try to give them fast food, it would taste disgusting to them. But it's just, we, we get used to foods, we're addicted to foods. Like I, I think it tastes better, so I'm not bashing anything at all. But it, it, it's not the taste better, it's just what we're used to. Because I mean, really, you take people from other cultures, they taste that and think like we're eating poison. Which we find it hard, but it tastes good, it's good poison. Anything else as far as this? Because I really, I would love to touch more on that, but it's um. Derek, yes. I was just going to say the um, ordering groceries and just going to pick them oh up, so God, you don't have to walk through the grocery store. So Paul's my hero on Thursday. Your, yeah. <laughs> when you're doing your list, you just order it. Yeah, she's not about, picking up extra stuff at the store. Yeah, mm -hmm. you only just drive in. Need. They come out and they give it to you, and it's a done deal. That's perfect. Did you guys hear that through the other microphone? So yeah. like, yeah, with Walmart and Publix now, with actually ordering ahead of time, like you could be making your list, actually setting up your shopping cart online, doing it, and then just go and pick it up. I mean, so that is like, it, it's making it even easier. And then for you local here, you have Fresh Choice Foods where, I mean, we send a text on Thursdays and food shows up magically on Mondays. I don't know who cooks it, I don't know who buys it, I don't know if it's whatever. <laughs> but I'll tell you the same thing like what Paul said about not spending extra money at the store. We buy coffee, creamer, toilet paper, paper towels, that's about in Greek yogurt. I mean, that's basically it. So we don't buy any answer because we get our food prep. So while it might look expensive that she's well, spending 60 bucks. Lately. Yeah, not lately. Oh my God, I enjoy the holidays. Like clients buy trainers, booze, and cookies. I mean, that's really, what, that's all we have in December. I had water twice. So like, yeah, it was, it was something else. But I can see out of my eyes at one point, just barely on like 26 and 27, and it's just swollen. But, um, but yeah, I mean, with Chris, it's like, so I think your meal's coming to like 60 something, my cup to 80 something or whatever, but like, you look at that and how many other times, like $140 might seem expensive, but then you start looking at that's every lunch, that's every dinner, that's every everything. So like every time that you stop at McDonald's, it's not five or six bucks, it's whatever more. You buy for a second person in the family, it's whatever more. And all that stuff keeps adding up. So that's just having somebody else cooking. When you start doing it for yourself, guys, most of our clients that we do food prep and actual meal plans for, 30 bucks or less is what you should be spending on you for food. Your kids should be maybe like 15 bucks. Your husband will be right about the same as you because you guys are going to eat about the same things. But if you're spending more than that, it's because you're not making a list and you're not detailing it enough. You're just saying, I want this for dinner that night, and you're going, you're buying the ingredients, kind of like a free for all. So the more you can be detailed, and that's what I said in my post this morning, and if you guys don't follow, please do. But um, that's the one thing. So the more structure you create in your life, the more freedom you create in other parts of your life. So if you can just take five minutes on this, then you're gonna spend a whole lot less time at the grocery store. But if you don't take five minutes on this, then you're there for an extra half hour or more. Abraham Lincoln said, if you give me five hours to chop a tree, is that how, yeah? I'll spend the first four sharpening and the last hour chopping it down. You know, so that's the whole thing is like, spend your time planning, spend your time going through what needs to be done, and then when you execute, you're all in, you commit, you do it, and you're done. But so many times people want to him and haul, whatever, and then they take kind of half-ass step, halfway steps, halfway steps, <laughs> to doing stuff, and it never equals what they're trying to do because they hit path the whole way through. So plan, get everything set up, and then you just execute and follow your plan. Okay. A pencil sharpener? No, the cart. Is that a treadmill? Yeah. This is a train. It really sounds like a treadmill. Somebody's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, we're getting late. No, I didn't realize how late it was. If you guys need anything else, I'm going to go ahead and post this on the support page. If you guys aren't on the support page, make sure you request to get in. We haven't really put much, but there wasn't really too much activity with it. So we'll go ahead and post uh, as far as the desserts. I'll go ahead and post as far as the fast food thing. That won't be till Friday. We'll put that out. Um, and any other questions, then please make sure you ask if we're here for you. Um, as far as exercise and stuff like that, yeah, so many people are looking for like options and things to do. Guys, there's choice literally in front of your building here. 
Like I know it's convenient to come in here at 515, but like you could be there by 515 too. You could change it in a locker room instead of in your office or a bathroom here. So there are options as far as that. It's not just boot camp or Jazzercise or Zumba or whatever. So we're trying to get some different contacts together so we can have some different things going for you guys throughout the year. But like you have a gym right there. We've put enough exercise on that support page to give you. To look to see. Yeah, Date City, we were supposed to look up a gym in your area and try and make contact with them, but I will try and work that out for you guys to see if we can find either like a Planet Fitness or something else. I want to reach out to Andrea out there too and see where she goes. Um, but we're going to try and set up a relationship so that you guys feel comfortable going to a place out there in case there's not something set up. She goes to the Y. The Y. The Y. There's a Y right out here. The YMCA is pretty amazing, guys, especially if you have families, because it's like a good family plan. For a single person, it is a little pricey, but um, yeah. So we'll try and make a contact out there for you guys. So I'm sorry, Dade City. We should have been looking. We're always left out. <laughs> I don't even know where Dade City is on a map. I can't oh, find it. Oh, <laughs> We love you guys. It was so much fun. I, it was really, it was such a great, like, six week, I guess we had I think, an hour and a half both ways, or hour, I guess, a half total. It spoke my life. It was great. We loved going down. Um, but guys, again, support page, make sure you're on there. If you have questions, just ask us. We're here to help. And again, we can point you in directions. We know a lot of people in this industry, in this area, like we can point you to people that can help. So let us know what you think and we'll do it. Thank and your you. gym's always open. And our gym's yeah. always open. Yeah, guys, we are starting a transformation challenge next Monday. Here's a shameless plug. But we're starting a transformation challenge next Monday. Um, it's our inches and pinches. It's the, kind of the biggest one we do of the year. Um, the one thing with this is we work with a dietitian from Orlando. Uh, it's the only one we do it for the year is with this one because obviously it's a lot of work with somebody else and stuff like that. But it's six weeks of a complete meal plan, meal by meal. So every single thing that we listed out is actually listed with the actual ingredients for every single meal. And then what's even cooler is at the end, every single week you have a complete grocery shopping list of all those ingredients that are on your meal plan. So literally all you have to do is take the grocery shopping list, buy it, then you come home and you make your different meals and go through that way. The first two days are like a detox, kind of like how we did with our virtual group for some of you that were in that. Um, but it's all healthy eating. It's like kind of like reducing sugar, reducing gluten, reducing food allergies, and it gives you just a ton of recipes. I think the soups are probably everybody's favorite every year. Go figure. But it's the right time of year and soup tastes good. But yeah, there's all sorts of different recipes and uh, desserts and stuff like that. So it's a full cookbook. But our virtual clients, it's 49 for you guys actually. You guys are considered returning clients, it's 99. So 99 includes unlimited boot camp with us. 49 is unlimited workouts by yourself. So, but um, all the workout plans we give you, you could do it at your Planet Fitness. You could do it at Choice and you could do a lot of stuff too. So thank you for that. But um, we'll post more information, I guess, on the page about that. Um, for the challenge, it starts on Monday, but it's for a whole six weeks. So, and our workouts go, like for you guys leaving here, the best workout time is probably going to be the 5.30 time when you leave here. If not, there's one at 6, and if you miss that, there's one at 7. Okay. Yeah, so there's all throughout the night. A lot and of 6 a.m. I was going to say, a lot of the clerk and county people, though, and the commissioners, they're all there at 6 a.m. Yeah, that's, that's probably our biggest time. It's right. teachers and all, all the county clerk, you know cops. Because yeah. really, once you know that it's done, it's like, Okay. Yeah, it is. Like, guys, exercize earlier, even though I don't like it, like, you get it done, it's out of the way. I wish I could, and I wish I had that drive, but I like to work in the morning. I wake up and I'm thinking about, how can I help you? But, all right, guys, I will let you guys go on Day City, because, yeah, we forget about you always. That's so messy up to me, I can't believe you said that to me. <laughs> guys, thank you, Day City. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'll get it. It's so funny, though, that they were talking about the chili and stuff. <laughs> oh, I was ready. I was ready. We were so enjoying I the was ready. dropping. Guys, if you didn't write that oh. website down, there's a 14-day meal plan on and there I for this. And I will post all this information on the support page as well. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to.